The Honourable Member for Rosevears. <laughs> Thanks, Mr. President. You know, uh, some people think a wine route is like a pub crawl with cellars instead of bars, but it's not so. Wine routes, like the Tamar Valley wine route, are much less excessive and much more sophisticated. Who ever heard of a pub crawl which gives annual awards? Mind you, <laughs> for some, it sounds like a pretty good idea. Um, but I want to talk about more on those awards later, Mr President, but uh, just what is the Tamer Valley wine route? Well, it grew from just one licensed cellar door, Marion's Vineyard, to now more than 30 cellar doors spread over 170 kilometres around the Tamer Valley. It's a great tourism asset and it welds together all of those vineyards into a cohesive group, as demonstrated by the annual awards which I attended last Friday night. The standout award this year was the Service to the Industry Award won by Sally McShane of Humbug Reach Vineyard, yes, in my electorate. Sally took on the challenge of compiling the Tamer Valley Wine Route History Project over the last two years. The history is now online as a digital archive accessible to all. Sally McShane says that many modern day pioneers of the wine industry are now retiring and there was that need, she felt, to capture their stories. Just to, just to quote Sally, sadly many records were already lost with one major company sending their records interstate and then losing them. The story of the wine industry in Tasmania is of people, passion and place. We want to be able to tell that story to the world. No early retirement in this industry. People leaving somewhat reluctantly in their 70s and 80s. <coughs> Sally McShane, Mr President. The project had support from Arts Tasmania with the services of a roving curator from the Tasmanian Community Fund with a grant for archival equipment and of course from the Tamer Valley Wine Route which then funded the addition of a gallery to its webpage. <coughs> Although at this stage the project is a digital record, it's hoped that it may one day lead to a <coughs> physical museum. And I'm sure that, like the Bogues Museum, will be quite an attraction for tourists. The Tasmanian wine industry can be said to have started in 1864, way back then, with an article in the Mercury newspaper by William Henty pointing out that Tasmania had a superior climate to Burgundy and Bordeaux. <coughs> But even with a recommendation like that, it was still a shaky start to, uh, to the wine industry in Tasmania, and it petered out, actually, in the 1900s. But in 1956, a Frenchman by the name of Jean Miguet planted the La Provence vineyard at Lalla in northern Tasmania, and then the modern era of winemaking in Tasmania so began. Initial plantings were from cuttings that were actually smuggled in from France. But Miguet corresponded with leading Australian wine figures of the day as he sought to import properly certified cuttings from the mainland to establish his commercial vineyard. Miguet also fought a very long and unsuccessful battle with Tasmanian authorities to sell his wines direct to the public. Seems unusual, doesn't it, to have to fight that sort of battle. Miguet's work was given further stimulus in the early 1970s when Andrew Pirry moved to Tasmania to set up the Pripers Brook Vineyard. And the rest is history, Mr President, and of course it's now ongoing. I'd like to talk about the rest of this year's awards before I give the address for that website for people to be able to access. The award for service from an outside organisation went to Launceston's Pinot Shop. The best wine list went to Davies Grand Central. The award for service from a cellar or vineyard worker was won by John Latchford of Moores Hill. And honorary life members were Roderick Cuthbert, Mary Dufour and Mike Sharman. Now, those three that I've just mentioned with their life awards are pioneers of the modern wine industry. Mike Sharman, makes one of the nicest Rieslings in Tasmania. It's on the outskirts 
of the southern outskirts of Launceston, and a dozen mixed wines from uh, Rod and Mary's Iron Pot Bay is always a special gift. As Tasmania's wine industry continues to grow, Mr President, and uh, the quality of our wines continues to, continues to improve, Tasmania is close to becoming the Pinot Noir capital of the Southern Hemisphere, as predicted by Ross Brown of Brown Brothers when he moved into the Tasmanian industry a few years ago. It uh, wouldn't be the end of the world, Mr President, uh, if I could only drink Pinot Noir uh, every second year. And fortunately, our industry continues to grow great varieties which are of great variance and we in Tasmania cultivate them so well. The history project, by the way, Mr President, can be accessed by going to the Tamer Valley Wine Route website and accessing the Heritage Gallery, www.tamervalleywineroute.com.au.